Greetings, royal family. You are about to hear the Honorable Yudhe Wape, Beit Noon Sophie Yudhe Wape, teach on the memorial blowing of trumpets. Now, this class took place in 1990. And those of you that are really concerned about being on the correct time, if you listen carefully, you will be able to get yourself there on the correct time according to solar time and our solar calendar, which is very different from the Gregorian calendar. But he makes reference to both calendars in this audio. This audio is lengthy, but if you have the stamina to listen in and listen on all the way through, some of your questions regarding time will be answered right here if you do your diligent study from what he says. Memorial blowing of trumpets according to solar time is on the first day of the seventh month. And then our next holy day is Day of Atonement, which comes in on the 10th day of the seventh month. Now this is on our solar calendar. What he does here that's wonderful is he lets you know on the Day of Atonement date what that will be on the Gregorian calendar as well. So on the Gregorian calendar, Day of Atonement, he says, is on the 15th day. Now he's speaking about September, not our seventh month on the solar calendar. And so from there, you'll be able to calculate, he also says, from Day of Atonement, that Feast of Tabernacles is about five days later. And so that would put your Feast of Tabernacles right around the 20th of September if you're on the Gregorian calendar. However, on our solar calendar, it's the 15th day of the seventh month. So if you're really listening in, you'll find out that Feast of Tabernacles is not in October. It doesn't go out that far. Our Feast of Tabernacles is on the 15th day of the seventh month on the solar calendar and right around the 20th of September on the Gregorian calendar, according to what he says on this audio. So I hope you're listening in very carefully. I hope that this clears up some of the information that you've been hearing out there on our calendar, because here he says it himself. We do have a class on the University of Yahweh.org with regards to keeping time as the timekeepers. We are the royal priesthood. We are the Yahweh's 144,000, and we are meticulous about time. So get your pencils out, take notes, and enjoy the memorial blowing of trumpets, 1990. From the Honorable Yud Hey Wav Hey, Beit Nun Sophie, Yud Hey Wav Hey. Thank very much. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. How do we love Yahweh? With all our minds, with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our minds. And how do we love our brothers and sisters? With all our minds, with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our minds. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. What is our motto? Our motto is one God, one mind, one love, and one answer. We're all for one. We want for our brothers and sisters. What, we want for what about soup? If I have soup, you may not have And anything else? Anything else. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. You may be seated. Praise Yahweh. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I had selected a very beautiful film for you tonight, and as full as I am, I still forced myself to come in and teach when I said I wouldn't do it probably until Tabernacle. But I love to teach the Word of Yahweh. And I'm happy for you that just planned to be here knowing I wouldn't be here. <laughs> so you're the blessed one. Those who thought I wouldn't be here for real will miss tonight. 
Turn to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Verses 24 and verse 25. Leviticus chapter 23. Verse 24 and verse 25. Let us read. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. <laughs> Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord Yahweh. And of course we know we are celebrating Memorial Blowing of Trumpets in all of our holiday days, according to our Hebrew calendar, meaning solar time. The Memorial Blowing of Trumpets is considered a holy convocation. Therefore, in order to understand the memorial blowing of trumpets, one must have a full and complete understanding of the words holy, as well as the word convocation. To be holy is to be exalted. To be holy is to be worthy of complete devotion as one who is perfect in goodness and righteousness. Many of our people realize that as a people, we are base, we are debased. Uh, we love darkness rather than light. We love filth rather than cleanliness. John, what says we? John 3, 19, turn. It is impossible to be exalted, love and darkness. John 3, 19. Read. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. As a people, i.e. our deeds are evil, as a people, so we're not exalted. To be holy is to be divine. I grew up thinking that only God was divine or whoever the supreme being is, is divine, the creator is divine. But here we find out that we ought to be divine. Would you look up divine, please? Since the memorial blowing of trumpets is a holy convocation, then this is a part of what we are to be, holy. It's not something that we just come to and hear some words. We are to actually live what the convocation is about, holiness. Read. Divine of pertaining to or proceeding from a God, especially the Supreme Being. We are celebrating a holy convocation that is proceeding from the Supreme One, Yahweh. And we ourselves have proceeded and come forth from the very loins of Yahweh himself with his flesh and blood. Go ahead. Addressed, appropriated, or devoted to God or a God. We're supposed to dress looking like God. When we find out how God looks, that's how we're supposed to look. 
Putting on the clothes of God does not make you like God. Putting on the clothes of God does not make you divine. Putting on the clothes of God does not make you holy. But I say to you that the clothes of God are righteousness. Go ahead. Divine, religious, sacred, godlike, characteristic of or befitting a deity, heavenly, celestial, extremely good. Now, we're to be all of this. That means you must study this. Celestial. What a word. <laughs> uh, some of you may have heard that word in the course of your life. Celestial. I wonder how many of you have heard that word. Celestial. Is it just the words you heard? Or does it have order about it? <laughs> it does? You mean celestial has order about it. And when you are in complete conformity to celestial, you conform to the order of the house. So where you live, celestial order exists. The very act of being divine. My goodness, if you have celestial order in your house, no wonder you would be exalted. Okay, go ahead. Divine, unusually lovely. Wait a minute. People that love darkness are unusually ugly. <laughs> go ahead. Being God, being a God, being a God, have I not told you? Psalms 82 6. Psalms 82 6. Psalms 82 6. Psalms chapter 82, verse 6. Read. I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Okay, divine, continue. Divine, of superhuman or surpassing excellence. Now, the memorial blowing of trumpets is regarded as a holy convocation. A place where, what? Did you say that again? Of superhuman. This is a place where superhumans are supposed to gather. Not normal humans. Not ordinary humans. Not regular humans. But superhumans are supposed to be gathered at this convocation tonight. Memorial blowing of trumpets as a holy convocation is just not for regular humans. So you won't find regular humans here. Regular humans are out in the outer world. And there are few regular humans in here tonight. And they look miserable. When regular humans are in the company of superhumans, they feel inferior. They know they are inferior. They have deeds of darkness. And when they see people who, superhumans, who have deeds of light, they feel inferior to the light. They are submerged and hit, you know, they're absorbed by the light. The light shines and gets all the attention. So naturally, those whose deeds are of darkness 
feel inferior and overlooked. Now those who deeds are of light, as a superhuman, you are super happy. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to be super happy? <laughs> now those that are not happy have to look at those of us that are superhumans. So you look around, you see somebody happy, say, that's a superhuman. <laughs> that must be a superhuman right there. That's a superhuman. Nah, uh, that's a regular human. Eh? Look how ugly this is. <laughs> that's a superhuman over there. Nah, that's another one of those regular humans. Why do you say that? Look at that forlorn look. They look lost, like everything they ever had is gone. Everything that was ever important has been taken. Or they're about to lose it. But to be a superhuman, boy, that's... You only thought white folks were superman. You know, Clark Kent. Y'all know Clark Kent, right? Fellow from Metropolis, Megalopolis, or somebody? <laughs> Leave a tall building with a single bound, fly like a bird, run fast as a locomotive, stop a train. <laughs> but to find out we are that superhuman. Huh? Deuteronomy 14, 2. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. We are that superhuman. Super happy. Super smile. Happy to be here. Happy to know Yahweh. Happy to receive Yahweh. Happy to live for Yahweh. Superhumans are happy to be blessed by Yahweh. Superhumans know they're rich. Inferior humans don't feel rich. <laughs> right, regular humans don't feel rich. They feel like they're in a struggle. How many feel like you're in a struggle tonight? Nobody wants to admit they're in a struggle? Superhumans are not in a struggle. Superhumans have the victory. And they are sure that when that role is called, they'll be in that holy role. They'll be in that holy number as a superhuman. Superhumans are full of joy. Regular humans don't know whether they want to clap or not. That, that, that's a regular human. Yeah. Superhuman is excited. Yeah, you know, really, really crazy. Regular humans, look, they look around when the superhumans are just about finished. They say, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a holy convocation. To be holy is to be divine. Superhuman. Divine. Of superhuman or surpassing excellence. Surpassing excellence. Normal people do not desire to be excellent. Regular people have no desire to be excellent. Normal human beings just care less about if excellence exists. Excellence? I exist. Who wants to be excellent? Not a regular human. But a superhuman seeks to exceed excellence. Now that's something. Say a hundred percent is all of it. But a superhuman 
will exceed 100%. Isn't that something to think about? In Yahweh University, I'm teaching us to be superhumans. I'm teaching all Yahweh University students to be superhuman. All of my superhumans that attend Yahweh University are going to write me a paper on being a superhuman. They will watch it. They will. They'll, they are. They're just on their own. They're going to go study how superhuman exceeds excellence. And they're going to write me a little paper on what a joy it is to be superhuman, Yahweh ben Yahweh said. They're going to do it. Boy, it's going to be a bunch of papers coming out of Hawaii. So that's, you know, they're learning that they are superhumans. That's exciting. Because, you know, I always, I used to get papers from all my superhumans in Yahweh University. <laughs> so I know they've been a little sleepy, took a little rest. But they are waking up tonight since I'm blowing the trumpet. <laughs> and making this loud noise in there. So all my superhumans that attend Yahweh University are going to write me a beautiful little paper on the joy of being a superhuman at Yahweh University. Boy, that's all right. Thank you, Yahweh University. That's all right. Yeah, all my university uh, students who are superhumans, they would always tell me something about how great it is to learn something from Shabbat class or from whatever class that I teach. And I agree that it's a wonderful, wonderful experience to get these classes. If you don't know what to teach, now Yahweh University knows something extra to learn. And this is something you can learn on your own, you know, your dictionary, synonym finder. So happy when our teachers seek to exceed excellence also. What a model. The memorial blowing of trumpets teaches us to be superhuman who seek to exceed excellence. What a people. Do you know that there's just no people as a nation like this on the earth? You imagine how joyful it is going to be to have a nation of people who seek to exceed excellence? Not just seek to live and exist, but just seek to exceed excellence. It's hard for me to leave that subject. That is memorial blowing of trumpets. That's what it's about. It teaches us to be superhuman. A people, as the nation of Yahweh, who seek to exceed excellence. Now, if I must exceed excellence, then tell me what excellent is. Give me excellent. And then after you give me the definition, then give me the synonym for it. But take your time. Excellent. Possessing excellence or superior merit. Remarkably good. Extraordinary. Superior. Exceed superior? We are going to attract brothers who will seek to exceed a superior status. Is that what y'all trying to tell me? Wow. We have, you mean we're going to collect beings, male and female, who will seek to exceed superior? Well, that sounds like some kind of ball situation. Excellent. First rate. Up right away. Excellent. Exceed first rate foods? Excellent. 
of the first order. Capital. Tip top. A number one. Extraordinary. Very remarkable. Bang up. Smashing. Marvelous. Wonderful. Splendid. Ripping. Great. Super. Tough. Bad. Cool. Dandy. Jim Dandy. Exceptional. Superior. Stand out. Outstanding. Striking. Superlative. Supreme. Transcendent. Sovereign. The best. Matchless. Peerless. Non-parallel. Perfect. Sterling. Classic. First class. Choice. Prime. Select. Very good. Bra. Fine. Admirable. Worthy. Esteemable. Notable. Noteworthy. Distinguished. Eminent. Eximious. That's it, sir. Memorial blowing of trumpets is teaching us to be holy, which is to be divine, which is to be a superhuman that seeks to exceed perfection. You look at whatever is a perfect character and say, I'm going to exceed perfection. I was never taught to be perfect, not to think about exceeding. <laughs> no one taught me how to be superior, not to consider exceeding it. You look at whoever is the very best and say, I shall exceed the very best. I will be the best of all the best. Of all that is the best, I'll be better than that. And all of the superhumans in this room is receiving what I'm saying. No matter what your age, you are receiving what I'm saying. That's the joy of talking to superhumans. Superhumans hear superior talk and they receive it and act on it. It becomes a part of them, not just their vocabulary, but their action plan. Superhumans set up a plan to exceed that which is superior. <coughs> Superhumans never make excuses nor try to justify their inaction, ineptness, nigritude, <laughs> their forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. Their laziness. Superhumans just won't try to justify it. Say, well, that's my fault. It doesn't exist anymore. My fault is gone. I've gone to the end. Studied and learned from the end. Now I'm wise. And now that I know what wise is, I'm going to be, I'm going to exceed the wise in their wisdom. I love to be in the presence of superhuman. Watch this. Watch this. All superhuman stand. I, I told you to watch this. That <laughs> I means some people are standing. 
because superhumans were standing. I told you they were jealous. <laughs> Didn't I? I told you ordinary, regular people are jealous of superhumans. So when the superhumans stand, everybody stands because they want to act like, hey, I'm one of them too. <laughs> I don't want nobody to look at me like I don't seek to exceed excellence. Ha 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 ha. Isn't that funny to know you can look around at people that don't seek to be good, not to think about being better? <laughs> well, if I gave everybody the job to look around and find the regular people, who would be able to? You wouldn't be able to. Why? Because everybody's standing as if they are superhuman. Superhuman is to be Holy. All holy people, sit down. <laughs> All superhumans think that's the funniest thing they have ever seen. And when I said that, everybody started laughing. <laughs> I need some water with that one. Why is it? Why is it? Everybody denies then. Not everybody's standing this time. So we see some people who's not divine, they're sitting. I'm trying to figure out how can somebody say they want to be in the sisterhood and when I give an order, especially when only divine people can be in. So I said all divine people stand. So if you're not divine, then I take your name off the list. I did recommend you join the sisterhood, so I'm taking you off. I don't care if you're crippled, blind and crazy and stupid. You can't be so stupid that you don't stand, boy, if you don't know what you are. You can't play this off like, I'm holding the baby. I didn't stand because I'm holding the baby. I don't care what you're holding. I said, all who are divine, stand up. <laughs> now we have 100% participation again. All superior beings, sit down. How many in here don't believe what you're seeing? You do not believe what you see. Oh, you mean everybody believes that everybody sat down with divine, huh? Superior. Well, I asked how many of you believe. Y'all don't even hear questions, huh? How many of you believe that everybody stood as divine it was so? How many don't believe it? Well, what is somebody doing? <laughs> I heard the su superhuman said they lying. <laughs> so, right? I mean, in God's face. Everybody that believes I am God stand. <laughs> All superhumans are happy that God is in our midst. Everybody that hates a lie, sit down. So I'm saying, what did he say? I better sit down. I don't know what he said. But everybody, everybody else sit down. I'm having me a seat, honey. <laughs> Everybody else sat down. I'm sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> Who
who would ever dream memorial blowing of trumpets would teach us this kind of lesson? To be a superhuman that exceeds excellence. That's what the nation of Yahweh is composed of. Now, there are going to be a lot of people around the nation of Yahweh that will have to come and worship the king wherever Yahweh chooses to place his name. But they all are not going to be of the nation of Yahweh. I am declaring to you, the nation of Yahweh is comprised of superhumans who seek to exceed excellence. And this is such a beautiful teaching that all superhumans know it is just. What makes this a just teaching is that every one of you can choose to be a superhuman or just be a regular human. To seek to exceed the best requires a lot more energy than it takes to be the best. <laughs> Therefore, the nation of Yahweh will be comprised of those who have a greater energy than the best have. Not only do they have a greater energy, but they will expend that energy seeking to exceed the best. <laughs> Boy, that's my kind of citizen. You are forced to respect, honor, glorify, fear, revere, love, hold in awe and veneration Yahweh because he gives every one of you as his creatures the opportunity to be a superhuman. The world in which you were born outside of Yahweh does not give you this kind of teaching. You're not told in the world outside of Yahweh that you should be the best. Forget about teaching you how to be the best. Those who run the fastest on track fields are not taught by this world how to run that fast. You're born with the ability to run that fast. You put all untrained people on the field, and there are those of you that will outrun everybody else because you're just already the best. They, they didn't teach you how to be that. You're born like that. Same with singing, dancing, whatever you do. But we're talking about that which takes a plan of directed energy. I'm declaring that all of you have the propensity to be, the capacity to be superhuman. Every one of you. Every Yahweh University student can be superhuman. Every single one of you. And you in Yahweh University that choose to be superhuman, nobody on the earth can stop you from being superhuman. Nobody.
If no one in Yahweh University wants to be superhuman but you, then you will be superhuman. All superhumans are so busy being superhuman, they don't have time to worry about regular humans. You may be seated. All adults that want to be superhuman, you, you've already turned your television off. That's right. Superhumans don't watch TV. TV teaches you how to be regular humans. Weak humans. Evil humans. Lazy humans. Materialistic humans. TV teaches you to become greedy humans. TV teaches you to become lustful humans. TV teaches you to bow down to many gods. So how can a superhuman watch stuff that's going to drag his mind down to a regular state? So children, if you have some regular parents <laughs> who turn the TV on when they take you home, you turn your back on it and go into another place and just go in and say, Yahweh bin Yahweh told me to turn the TV off. If you want to get back at them, you tell them Yahweh bin Yahweh told me to turn the TV off. <laughs> and you turn it off. And dare them to say anything. You come tell me. Hey, that's right, children. They've been getting on your case about something. You get back at them. You say, Yahweh bin Yahweh told me to not let no TV stay on in this house. I'm cutting it off. And if you bother me, I'm going to tell him. Go <laughs> right and tell him. They better not bother you. Don't worry about it. I'm better than they are. I'm tougher than them. I'll straighten them out. Better not bother my kids for cutting off no regular human box. <laughs> well, that's power, isn't it? That's called power in the home. Every superhuman will cut the TV off. Tell your regular human parents, said, I'm not regular, Ema. I'm a superhuman. Remember the class Yahweh and Yahweh taught me memorial blowing the trumpets? Said superhumans turn TV off. Now, you, your regular parents will get upset because <laughs> they're inferior-minded. And they love inferiority. But you just go on and be a superhuman and cut it on off. It'll be their favorite TV show, too. <laughs> Make sure it's their favorite show. How can an inferior TV show help you to become superior, superhuman, and to exceed the best? I find it interesting when I come around and don't hear my tape on and I see some white images on TV. And sometimes I look at people like that and I say, well, what you watching? I just asked it for the fun. I don't really want to know. I know they're watching the devil. I know they're watching inferiority. That's which is teaching them to go against the laws of Yahweh. I know that. I know that's what TV is teaching. So I don't really want you to tell me. I'm really asking you, don't you know what you're doing to yourself? That's what I'm really saying. I'm just being real kind and real nice because when you're superhuman, you don't need me to tell you not to watch inferiority. You don't. You don't need me to tell you. You are strong enough to cut it off yourself. Some people brainwash themselves all night, half the night. How do they do that? Go to sleep on that box. And all that wicked stuff is going inside your head, and really you do. You wake up the next day and a few days later, you're acting strange 
compared to your normal self. Even you begin to wonder, why am I acting kind of weak? Even you know it's weak. Why am I acting kind of weak? They've told you to smoke 1,500 different kinds of cigarettes. <laughs> told 2,000 lies while you sleep. You wake up the next day and start lying. Even you begin to know it's a lie. Say, you know, I wonder why I said, how many of you have ever told a lie and then became conscious of it? Say, wow, I just lied. <laughs> you ever done it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say, wow. You know, I know that's not right. Why did I lie like that? It really wasn't necessary for me to tell a lie and I just lied. How I many have let the lie pass? You know, like, don't apologize. Just let it ride. Hope other people didn't pay much attention. You done that too? Yeah, yeah. You say, well, well, then you say, well, Yahweh, I won't lie anymore. <laughs> that was slip. That's from keeping the wrong company, namely TV. Memorial blowing of trumpets, teaching us to be holy, to teach us to be divine, which is to teach us to be superior humans which is to teach us to exceed that which is perfect, exceed that which is the best, exceed that which is excellent. And any one of you that choose to be a superhuman qualify to enter the nation of Yahweh. See, we don't have too many superhumans sitting out here. They said a while ago, I asked, How many superhumans in the building? Stand up. See, now earlier I told you a superhuman was happy. <laughs> All happy people sit down. <laughs> Isn't that the funny thing? You can look around at some people, they look so ugly. <laughs> Boy, if you're happy and ugly as you look, I just don't want to be happy. Have you ever seen people, I mean, they look so ugly, it's just like they, they would win the ugly contest. <laughs> of all ugly people on earth, they would win the contest. <laughs> Exceed without even trying. Instead of a superhuman, just be super ugly. <laughs> and can you imagine that person saying they are happy? <laughs> Uglier than a bulldog in the face. If you never know how to tell an ugly person, have a bunch of people look in the mirror, and when you hear someone say, God, I'm ugly, now you got a point, boy. <laughs> That's an ugly person. <laughs> Some people are not too sure about how they look. <laughs> so they go up and ask somebody else, how do I look? <laughs> Can you imagine walking up to an ugly person and asking, how you look? If you look bad, they're gonna lie. And what are they gonna say? Ooh, yeah, child, you look good. Skirt is hanging, slip hanging, skirt's hanging sideways. The cuff is all torn loose, spots on the back of the dress. So how does my dress look? Ooh, it's beautiful. <laughs> and then they laugh at you when you go out in the public. Imagine qualifying to become a citizen in the nation of Yahweh. All of you can qualify. When you seek to exceed superiority. You're not satisfied to be normal. Continue. What are we on? Divine. Divine. To be holy is to be divine. A superhuman. Divine. Of or pertaining to divinity or theology. A theologian. 
Scholar in religion, a priest or clergyman, God, the spiritual aspect of man, the group of attributes and qualities of mankind regarded as godly or godlike. Now, you got it? That brings it home, doesn't it? Attributes, characteristics, character of God. The character of Yahweh. Yahweh is supreme, and you are to exceed that which is supreme. Some of you, only a superhuman is looking at what I'm saying. Look up a superhuman. What is she looking at? Superhuman. Superhuman. Above or beyond what is human. Having a higher nature or greater powers than man has. Exceeding ordinary human power, achievement, experience, etc. This tells me you can experience this phenomenon. which places it within the realm of possibilities. This means that when you look at the powers of man, you can exceed all the powers that you see them have. The man you worship, your taskmaster, Pharaoh and his children. You know, your white slave masters, other nations that are your taskmasters that you love to worship and obey? All the power you see them have, you can exceed that. You are expected to exceed all the power that you see other men have, all men. You can experience that. Go ahead. You are to be a superhuman. That's it for the definition. All right, give me That forces you to give up all foolish conversation. I have some youngsters, you know, they come out of, before they get out of Yahweh University. And at 17, they can get out of Yahweh University and go into another area of learning. And all, when they get that, to that stage, a certain stage, they seem to want the opposite sex. You know, they start thinking boyfriend, girlfriend, who they can hug, who they can kiss, uh, who they can marry. All of a sudden, they want to marry. <laughs> if you look over, you know, you see certain little grins about now. You know, the different ones are saying, oh my God. Some are looking at other people saying, oh my God, is he talking about me? Oh my God, oh yeah, well. Heart drop, right? I can't stop teaching the truth because your heart drop. <laughs> oh no. But you start getting these little ideas about you want to marry. Those of us that have been your age once, that have become superhuman, have a lot of questions to ask you. And we that love you will ask you those questions. Namely, what do you have to offer my daughter? <laughs> hey, what, I, that, yeah, you have to answer me. What, what do you have? You have a bank account? <laughs> How much are you willing to pay me for my daughter? I have invested a lot in her. 
I have fed her and clothed her and housed her for 17, 18 years. So now I want some of my investment back since you want my daughter. <laughs> I, I would at least like to break even in this deal. <laughs> so I'm getting ready, since you want to be my son, I'm getting ready to pull out my calculator and see how much this girl cost me all her life. <laughs> You can have her as soon as you pay me. Isn't that funny? But you better be glad that you weren't who? Take her. See, a wise father will ask you to pay him for his daughter. You got to pay me, man. You can't come here and just, I put too much money in her. And you fixing to take her and not pay me? Uh -huh. You didn't have no money? I got a job for you. I got seven years worth of work for you. <laughs> See, there's a whole lot of folk don't want to get married under those conditions. They suddenly get wise, you know. Well, uh, I'd like to apologize for being rash, rash with my mouth, you know. They get real scriptural on you right quick, you know. Suddenly the word of Yahweh gets to be real, like, well, I'm sorry I was a rash with my mouth. <laughs> say seven years, it takes, well, yeah, you say you love my daughter. You love my daughter? Uh, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir, I love her. Well, seven years. Since you're, I'll take, I'll let you have her on the credit plan. This is an installment. <laughs> Cost you 84 months, huh? <laughs> That's short time, you know. Eight, only 84 months. You can have her after 84 months. It's a debt payment. I have a credit, revolving credit plan. <laughs> And the only way you can have it, it takes all 84 months. Then I'll let you have it. <sighs> Most men just want to have it. They don't want to pay for it. <laughs> and then, you know, be trying to talk to my daughter all around my head, you know, all around the corner and stuff. Like, I'm going to buy you a Mercedes. <laughs> We're going to buy you a big house. We're going to get married and have some starving children. <laughs> Raggedy kids. <laughs> Why, Spotter said, what's your craft? Craft? Craft. Yeah, you know, not crackers, crab. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about a boat. I'm talking about a crab. What's your profession? You want my daughter. This is all a part of the wisdom of a memorial blowing the trumpets. This is all coming out of this lesson. That's, that's a part of becoming superhuman. You know, you, you want my daughter, but you don't want to be superhuman. To have my daughter, you got to be superhuman. You can't lay with my daughter and don't be superhuman. That's the way it is. Some want to talk to my daughter and show her and say, well, what are you? Well, I'm a painter. I'm an artiste. <laughs> what kind of painter are you? I paint pictures. What kind of pictures do you paint? I paint pictures of Mercedes, big houses. <laughs> But the Mercedes doesn't go nowhere. It's just a picture. Now my daughter may be silly. She may be silly. I understand that. She may believe in your paintings. But that's why I'm around as father. Abba. <laughs>
That's why I am here as Abba. See, now if you can make that picture on, that you just painted come alive and drive up in it, we might talk about that. And you got, how many children you say you want? Several, that means you got a house with a bunch of bedrooms in it. You're not getting ready to trade up later. You, you already got, got it. So you can't show me the house with the Mercedes in the driveway. Then you can talk to me about my daughter. If you don't have that going and you don't have no money, you can't pay, her, pay me for what I put in her, <laughs> then you can't even talk to my daughter. She can't braid your hair. I thought we were sisters and brothers. Yeah, right, go get your sister to do it. <laughs> and my daughter not fixing to braid it. <laughs> That's right, son, you go get your sister to do it. My daughter is not going to be braiding your hair. She hardly ever cooks for me. I don't know who you think you are. You've been, come on. You don't need to know whether she can cook or not. I hardly know that myself. <laughs> Neither one of y'all got any money. You gonna tell me you're in love, right? Bring me your resume, tell me you're ready to work seven years for. And I'll look for that tomorrow. If I don't get your resume tomorrow about you want to work seven years for, then I know you've been jiving it, and then, it, then she'll know you silly all the time. She's silly too. <laughs> we can make it together. Make what? <laughs> Pain and suffering? That's all you're gonna make with no money. And you think, I'm going to take care of you and your children? And you don't seek to be superhuman? If you're superhuman, you are an asset. And anybody on the earth would be happy to have you in their employment. <laughs> yeah. Everybody is looking for a superhuman to work with them. But if you're a superhuman and you get ready to get married, you'll come ready. You say, well, I know some people in the nation of Yahweh that got married and they didn't have nothing. Now, they not, you forgot what I said tonight. Only superhumans are going to be in the nation of Yahweh. So you may have seen some people that's been hanging around here that got married, but you need to ask yourself a question. How well are they doing? Oh, you don't necessarily measure them by their Mercedes in the big house they may or may not have. But are they superhumans? Are they superhumans? Are they superhumans? Are they divine? Do they seek to exceed excellence in all that they do? And I, I repeat that you can't have my daughter unless you're a superhuman. Because I'm a superhuman. And if my daughter doesn't know she's a superhuman, I'll work on her case until she knows she at least wants a superhuman. I'll, I'll be her standard for her. So sometimes our girls just fall in love. <laughs> they fall in such deep love, they can't sleep at night. They be awake all night long. In love. Oh, love in love. Love makes them have insomnia. <laughs> 
Love makes them fast. Sometimes they go without food. They just don't feel hungry sometimes. Love Joan is on them. So what's wrong with you? I'm in love. Why are you up so late tonight? Love got me walking. I seem to be consumed with this love. But everybody that has been through your little age group that is wise in the knowledge of Yahweh will ask you some questions. What do you have? What are you prepared to do? What can you provide for your family, for your future? What do you have? How have you prepared yourself? What are you prepared to do? To be? Are those, how many adults know those are good questions to ask? Of course, now adults know those are good questions and they don't pay attention to it. They marry the first man that asked them. <laughs> and some of the brothers, they marry the first woman to fall down in front of her. He tripped over, she said, she said, oh, he said, will you marry me? She said, oh. <laughs> he said, yeah, that's it. <laughs> this is love, baby. <laughs> She tripped him up. <laughs> well, glory. You might say, how is that having to do with the memorial blowing trumpet? What are we talking about? Superhuman. Superhuman. Did we finish? No, sir. We're, uh, the synonyms are superhuman. All right, give it to me. Superhuman. Supernatural. Preternatural. Preacher human, paranormal, otherworldly, extraterrestrial. Not of this, not of the earthly. A person whose mind is not of the earthly. You want to marry my daughter? Come back on your case. What kind of conversation do you have with my daughter? Well, how was your day? Oh, fine. Told. <laughs> how was your day? Oh, told. <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, they still, how was your day? Told. Oh. How was your day? Oh, fine. Told. I mean, can you imagine a lifetime of that? I don't believe any terrestrial <laughs> is going to be on the phone half the night talking about Yahweh. Do you? Only an extraterrestrial is going to talk about Yahweh. So if the brother that's talking to your daughter is not extraterrestrial, what in the world are they talking about? <laughs> huh? Now some of you old coons know what I'm talking about. You all know what he's talking about? <laughs> How many of you know what they're talking about? Look around, everybody. All y'all, some don't want to look around. I said, look around. Everybody who know what they're talking about, raise your hand. Now, everybody look around. I want to see how everybody look around. Some people don't want to see all these hands, but how could they know what I'm talking about? They used to talk about it. <laughs> Before we knew Yahweh, what you think we talked about? Hey, baby. Sure look good to me today. I did. Mm -hmm. Sure did now. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that? 
baby, you just can't imagine what you do to me. How many heard conversations like that? <laughs> look at look at this. So y'all not new? <laughs> Everybody in the room has heard your rap. <laughs> People 80 years old heard your rap. And you think you're fooling somebody. Well, when Monroe blowing the trumpet is telling you, you're not fooling anybody. We all are aware. But our love says, what you better blow is just the trumpet. You're not getting ready to blow my daughter. Man. I said you're not going to blow my daughter's name with no terrestrial rap. Now that's what they need to be talking about, what that baby is saying. Over there. <laughs> the baby just saying, Yahweh, that's pure. Now if you're not talking about what that baby is saying, then uh, we know what you're doing. I have to take your telephone out. Can't call my house number. Don't call my house. So you're not talking about Yahweh, so don't call my house. Is that right or wrong? Is that righteous? See that I can keep her from being pregnant before I'm ready for her to be. If she keeps listening to you, she'll be wanting to meet you out, you know, in a hall. So she'll, she'll want to meet you in, in the upper room. Uh, she'll want to meet you uh, on the stairway. Uh, she'll want to meet you in re recess tomorrow. <laughs> or she'll just figure out a way to one keep the house mother busy while the other one meets and talks a little while. <laughs> Like, we don't know that's how that works, right? <laughs> y'all think y'all slick, right? <laughs> you think you figured up a new one. <laughs> we all played those subterfuge games, you know. Keep mama busy in the front room. Huh? Yeah. How I many know about those days? You can keep somebody busy in the other part of the house. You don't have to go nowhere. You just stand there and tell me, is she still asleep? <laughs> Your mama wake up, you come and tell them, just holler at me. How many heard about some scenes like that? Yeah, uh, raise your hand if you heard about that. Look around, all you who think you hip, look around. Is she asleep? That's when times are desperate. Those are called desperate days. That's worse than desperados in the Wild West. <laughs> it's dangerous to let a nigga visit your house talking about courting. <laughs> if you, if you, no, it's, it's dangerous to let people court in your house, especially when you be sleepy. <laughs> a, sleep, a sleepy chaperone got a problem. <laughs> Am I right? How many know I'm right? Well, y'all ought to look around and get a lesson. A sleepy chaperone is in trouble. <laughs> well, that's when terrestrial thinkers can, their ears get real high pitched tuned. They can hear mama just turn over. <laughs> yeah, they can hear when mama walk out the kitchen. It's a fact now. 
superhuman. Superhuman, super mundane, hyperphysical, divine, godlike. Mm. Did you hear that? Superhuman is godlike. That means the nation of Yahweh is going to be made up of godlike people, people that are like God. Okay. Transcendent, almighty. Ooh, almighty. Okay. Omnipotent, all-knowing, omniscient, supernal, supreme. Now that's, that's the kingdom of heaven. We've never understood what the kingdom of heaven is. My job is to magnetize 144,000 superhumans to my mindset. <laughs> Who become superhuman in practice, in character. All superhumans stand. <laughs> Some don't know whether they should clap or not. They, they, heard, the, they heard the kids say, Yahweh, Yahweh, something. Oh, wow, now, there you go. So, is that what's expected next? <laughs> All who are divine, have a seat. Some people will say anything in the presence of Yahweh, won't they? <laughs> Superhuman, lofty. What? Lofty. Lofty. Exalted. Mm -hmm. Herculean. Courageous. Brave. Valiant. Valorous. Heroic. Daring. Death defying. Extraordinary. Unheard of. Unexplainable. Unbelievable, amazing, phenomenal, miraculous. These are the characteristics. Memorial blowing of trumpets teaches us we must have. How many of you know people who have tried to stop you from being superhuman? I wonder why. Why would anyone want you not to be superhuman? How many of you know there are people now who will try to stop you from being superhuman? Mm-hmm. How many of you know the greatest mistake in your life is to marry a regular human? <laughs> Some of you are really trapped, aren't you? <coughs> Some of you feel, how many feel trapped? <laughs> been lying all night, you're not about to change now. <laughs> you just tell me that in secret. <laughs> On your pill at night. Oh, Yahweh. 
help me y'all when I feel so trapped. <laughs> oh y'all, how you let me get in this? Is there any way out? But I'm not about to say it in front of them. Not right now, anyway. How many have seen people that said they felt trapped? That makes it easy to raise your hand. Right now. <laughs> Superhuman. Memorial blowing up trumpets is a holy convocation. To be holy is to be exalted, <coughs> worthy of complete devotion. To be holy is to be divine. To be holy is to be devoted entirely to Yahweh. That's what the memorial blowing of trumpet teaches us, that we are to be entirely devoted to Yahweh. or to be entirely devoted to the work of Yahweh. I'll take it either way. You can't tell me that you are devoted entirely to Yahweh and you don't want to do any work for Yahweh. We've learned holy is to be one who has divine qualities. So the memorial blowing of trumpets reminds us that we must live the law of Yahweh. We're reminded during the memorial blowing of trumpets that we are to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Let's turn to James chapter 1, verse 22. James 1, 22. Thus the memorial blowing of trumpets re renews our memory of the covenant that we made with Yahweh at Mount Horeb. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 2 and 3. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 2 and 3. 3. The Lord our God, Yahweh, made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord Yahweh made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. All of our feasts are interrelated, and thus they play a very definite role in the divine destiny of all men. Passover illustrates how we pass from an immoral state over to a moral state. As we pass into a state of moral consciousness during Passover, we become accepted as the first fruit of Yahweh, which is represented when? Feast of Weeks. The memorial blowing of trumpet promotes devotion to Yahweh's purpose and thereby creates unity between ourselves and Yahweh. It's all about becoming one with Yahweh. The trumpet is used, memorial blowing of trumpets, the trumpet is used as a sign of warning to alert the world that we must obey the laws of Yahweh. After this warning to the world, those who obey will become at one with Yahweh. When? 
The Day of Atonement. When is the Day of Atonement? The 15th of this month. The Day of Atonement. Which is what day of our solar calendar? 10th? Huh? The 10th day of the seventh month is the 15th. And we will have Memorial Blowing of Trumpets, which we have tonight. We will have Day of Atonement next weekend. What is it, five days later? Six days later? Five days later is what? The beginning of Tabernacles. All of that is upon us. And after we become at one with Yahweh, we then qualify to do what? Enter into the tabernacle of Yahweh. And what does that mean? Feast of Tabernacle. So it's a process. All the way, beginning at Passover, beginning at Passover, you have a total of how many holidays? Seven. Holy days. Seven holy days. Can, how many can name those holy days? What's the first one? Second? Third? Fourth? Memorial Born of Trumpets. Fifth? Sixth? Seventh? Right. Those are the perfect seven high holy days. So in all of these days are really culminated in the Holy Convocation, although normally they say it's culminated in the Feast of Tabernacles, but the culmination is really in the Holy Convocation following Feast of Tabernacles. And that's when I gather my first fruits into the Tabernacle of Heaven. So that's a, the that's a process. And I am carrying us all through a process. Tonight, I started to show you Memorial Blowing of Trumpets, 1984. And most of you have never seen it. And you that have been with, that were with me in 84, you don't remember it because you were here in it. But I really started to show it to you tonight because there's so many new ones of you and the rest don't know what happened in 1984. But the wisdom that I taught 10 years ago, nine, eight, seven years ago, is absolutely overwhelming. It's not untrue today. It's all just as true as when I taught it and just as relevant. <laughs>